good morning. Thank God for Mike. Thank God for young Dr. Wheeler. Chip of the old block, so I must say thank God to Dr. Wheeler Sr. Now you all may think I'm just saying that. When I show up, you know, I have no fear about what I'm going to teach. Because if I'm coming from this Bible, I, I fear nobody. Somehow or other they find a way to get me in here. I kind of like that. Boy, it's interesting. Talking about the tempter. I'm going to talk about him too. I'll just come at him from a different angle. But before I get into it, uh, some things happening in the city that we ought to be concerned about, and that is we're still repeating too many homicides in this town. God hates murder. Okay? And if God hates it, we've got to hate it also. I'm concerned about that. I read a report uh, 2012 of the high school dropouts. And you're talking about the tempter rolling himself up in these young people and causing them to think that they can't make it? And that's exactly what you're talking about, Mike. And I'm concerned that uh, the dropout rates are highest in the inner city. And I'm concerned, wild color shouldn't matter, but they look like me. I'm concerned about that. And I've lived long enough to know that the answer to that is in the power of the tongue. And what I got, when I get to it in here, I put some solutions in here and I'll try to share it with you later. But the solution to that problem is in the power of the tongue. We've got to stop this dropout business. God does not employ dropouts. Please believe me. You're choosing not to go with God when you do it that way. Amen. I think we ought to also encourage people to come to church and, if, and feel some of what I saw in this praise team this morning. Amen. We ought to tell these people to get in here. You know, I, I go all over this place. I'm not stationary anymore. So I tell them to come here and I tell them to go to other churches as well. But they ought to be in church. Amen. Please believe me, they ought to be there. If they discover what's in here, things would be different. Amen. I just had to throw that commercial in there if you let me do that. Now let's get down to business. I want to read Genesis 3.15. And I'll set the stage so that I can continue where Mike left off. It says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Did you hear the tempter in there? The seed of the woman is going to bruise Satan, the tempter's head. And since I'm a teacher, I just have to start teaching before I give you the subject. This is the first time in the Bible that God revealed to Moses to identify Jesus as the seed of the woman and his purpose for coming into the world is to bruise that tempter's head. Yes. Yes. Isn't that something? Yes. And the battleground was set there. And there has been an adversarial relationship between Satan and the seed of the woman who is Jesus, the Redeemer, since that point. 
And as Mike was talking about how the devil wraps himself up into situations to confuse you, he's still doing that. He gets into the most meniscal situation and create havoc in your life. You got to watch him. When it says watch and pray, well, you better watch because he's there. He's in the world. He was cast into the earth and he hasn't gotten out of here yet. I'll share that with you as I go along. Then John 10 and 10, I should throw that one on you. I'm setting the stage for my subject. John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Guess who that thief is? That's the tempter. That's just another one of his names. Isn't that something? And it took me, I used to read that, and, and I didn't have a, a, a feel for it. But Satan wants to kill you. Do you understand that? That's it. He wants to murder you. And I see it happening right here in this town. I see it happening in the inner city all over this country. That's Satan. Did you all hear what I just said? That's not an accident. That's Satan. But I like the last part of that verse. See, Jesus said that. Jesus says, I come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I said, I read that many times and I didn't understand what that said meant. God, Jesus says, I came that you will have life abundantly. Abundantly means more than enough. Whatever it is that you have, if you have an abundance, it's more than enough. You have it for someone else. He says, I came. Well, then we ought to get our faith and our minds and our attitudes up to the point to believe that. Amen. That he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Oh, we ain't got no business walking around here begging. Amen. We ain't got no business walking around, even sick. Amen. 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 You understand what I'm saying? Declare your health and get on up. Amen. That's what that's saying to me. Amen. Have life and you have it more abundantly. State that and mean it and live it. You gotta live that because the tempter is messing. With, that's the tempter it's talking about there. And then this one. Ezekiel's 28:15. Thou was perfect in thy way from the days thou was created till the iniquity was found in thee. Uh -huh. That's talking about the tempter. Uh -huh. I'm going to show you the history of how Satan became Satan. Mm -hmm. The dragon. The tempter. Deceiver of mankind. God said that through Ezekiel said I created you perfectly until iniquity was found in you. That's the tempter is talking about. I was a young man. I couldn't see that. I didn't understand that. You got to understand Satan that we know now. We call him the devil. His first name was Lucifer. He was an archangel. An archangel is the highest order of the angels. He served God in the heavenly place until he made up his mind that he wanted to Go against God. The tempter. Now think about that. He's going to attempt God. The God who created him. Can you, can you see that? No, isn't that something? Well, what I want to tell you then today, I'm going to try to continue. Those were the scriptures that to set the stage for uh, the discussion until you ring my bell and I'll have to get out of here. I want to start where I started last time, and this will be part two. And you know what that subject was? Jesus, the seed of the woman, was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. I don't want to say that too fast. Did you get it? Jesus, the seed of the woman, was manifested to destroy the works of the devil, the tempter. Isn't that something? 
Oh man, it just 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 knocks me out. Well, the point I want to make to you he says the seed of the woman is talking about Jesus Christ. And that tempter that Mike talked about, he has been an adversary of Jesus Christ from that point. It was conceived in the spirit realm before then, but Moses wrote it in Genesis 3.15. When God revealed his, this notion of who this tempter was, in Genesis 3.15, describing that adversarial relationship that exists between Satan and the Son of God, the fight has been on every since. Now, isn't that something? Isn't that something? Now, listen to me carefully. Are you listening? Whenever and wherever you see Jesus in Scripture, his reason for being is to destroy the work of the devil, the works of the devil. Now watch this. And whenever and wherever you see the devil in scripture, his reason for being is to destroy mankind and to discredit God who created everything. Do you see the adversarial role of that devil, the tempter? Can you see it? He's going to tempt God who created everything. Isn't that something? Therefore, when we look at Genesis 3.15, I said, Jesus was described there as the seed of the woman. And that was the first time in the history of the world that God had the occasion to chastise the devil. Did you get that? That took place in the Garden of Eden. When he says, but let me tell you something he said before he said that Thy seed shall attack his heel, and, and her seed shall attack your head. He said to the devil, says, I'm going to curse you beyond all of the beasts of the field. I'm going to cause you to crawl on your belly for the rest of your days, and you'll eat the dust of the ground. That's what he said to him before he said, Thy seed shall attack his heel and he shall bruise your head. Did you get that? That's the biblical history of that. Well, immunity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the devil is the conflict that you see right now that is happening between mankind I have to say mankind also Believers, the church, and individuals. Did you all get that? But I found out something that I was receiving that you see, in order for Satan to have a seed, he had to recruit a man like you and me to go against God to become his seed. You see how wise God was? He couldn't let Satan get up here and be multiplying like he did man. We reproduce, don't we? Did you realize that Satan doesn't have that capacity? He had to recruit you and me to become his seed. I only understood that when I began to study this. But he'll have you as the seed of Satan. That's where it began. The angels who fell with him, I found out that those were his first seeds. Those are those demon assistants that he has right now to upset this whole world. Isn't that interesting? Boy, I'm telling you the truth. It's frightened me nearly to death. We as Christians in the world, one thing you've got to understand, that he's your enemy. Amen. But the seed of the woman didn't leave you helpless. Amen. Listen to what it says. You have the power to bruise his head. Amen. The thing that I'm concerned about is too many of us don't understand that. Amen. We're not bruising his head. Yeah. Mike talked about you resist the devil. Well, that's one of the things that God gave you when he muzzles Satan. Gave you the power to resist him. If you resist him, he will go. That's exactly what it says. Now, let me talk about a little bit about Satan's ability to bruise your heel. 
<laughs> Did you hear me? Amen. I want you to understand this. That means that Satan has the power to attack the seed of the woman. And you got to understand that the seed of the woman are Christians like you and me, body of Christ. It also means mankind, people who are outside the body of Christ. It also means your family. Satan will even attack an individual baby. Did you all understand that? But we ought to be able to say thanks be to God that he redeemed us and gave us the power to fight back. We ought to say thanks be to God when he redeemed us he gave us the power to fight back. God has given us that head bruising power to crush Satan's head and put him in his place. But if you don't know that you have are supposed to have that power, did you realize you can't use it? That's right. Amen. That's why I thank God that I'm a teacher because I'm going to try to help you understand that. You understand? You can resist the devil and he will go. Well, how is that possible? Now let me show you how wise God was. And uh, and how he set all this up. The question I just said, a phrase that I just used there, is how is this possible? At the cross of Calvary and the three days following, Jesus shed his blood to make things right between you, me, and God. When he shed his blood, he created a situation where the Lord gave us a pardon for all of the sin beginning with the sin of Adam's fall in the garden. We were made, brought back to God. You understand what I'm saying? Your slate was clean right at that point. You understand? The Lamb of God had defeated Satan. He had defeated sin and even defeated death because he rose from the dead. He defeated death, the grave, and every demon in hell. Well, what I want to tell you then once grant God granted you a pardon for your sin through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have the authority to beat up on Satan and set him on his and send him on his way every time. I hope you heard that. Once he gave you the pardon through his redeeming blood, he gave you the power to set Satan. There's no situation that Satan can come at you that you can't send him out of there. You got him. Right there. Did you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh man, I'm saying that Satan, sin, death, defeated by Jesus Christ on the cross, and during those days that he that he was in that grave. You understand what I'm trying to say? And I'm trying to tell you, you must be born again to be able to say that. Tell all of your friends that you must be born again to be able to have that head crushing power to send Satan on his way every time he comes. Satan beat up on us because we don't understand that. Did you understand what I'm saying? Let me tell you something else on that cross. When on, on the cross, you understand, God, that was a reward. You hear the blessings of Abraham, the blessings of God, Well, once you become born again, you become heirs of all of the blessings of Abraham. That means that you become an heir of everything that God owns. You understand? God told Abraham, I will bless them that bless you. And I will curse him that curses you. He's saying that to you and me if you're born again. Do you see how powerful you become just by being born again? Do you see what Jesus accomplished on the cross by shedding his blood. He did all of this for us. He set us in the driver's seat to win. You ain't got no business losing. And when I see people walking around losing, it frustrates me. Because if they'd come and get into that Bible and understand what it said, you ain't got no business losing. You ain't got no business losing. People can't believe that. It is not God. It's the faithlessness of man. Amen. Are you with me on that? Amen. If you understand that, that's how bad we are. We're bad, aren't we? Amen. You may not know it, but I'm bad. Amen. I want you to hear me. I come in here, I ain't got no fear of Satan. 
I got it. I'm bad by the blood of Jesus. I'm a bad man. I'm serious. I'm a bad man. Now, Satan's doom. That's what I want to talk about. Satan's doom. Now, I want to teach you something, and I really didn't know about this or didn't understand it until I got into this research, but you go out here today knowing something about Satan. Let me point out to you that Satan's downfall was the greatest example of an act of an angelic failure in the spirit realm ever committed or ever experienced. I don't know of one greater. Satan's downfall. When I say Satan, I have to start with him by the name of Lucifer. Satan's name was Lucifer from the beginning. And the point that I want to point out to you is this. Did you hear me when I read that verse a few moments ago? God said to him, Thou was perfect in thy way from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Uh Satan was created perfectly. Lucifer was his name at that time. Did you get it? He was put in a perfect environment with perfect beings, other angels, because he was in heaven. Did you get that? Satan even served God in his holy room, in his holy throne, or throne room. Did you get that? But despite that perfection, and despite the fact that Satan was in a perfect environment, he rebelled and rose up against God, and that sin separated him from God. He's no longer called Lucifer. His name is Satan from that point. Dragon even, uh-huh. Belzebub, prince of darkness, father of lies, deceiver of the brethren. I just want to give you some of the names that he's acquired because of what he developed himself into. Isn't it strange when you go against God? Anything can happen to you. Satan went from a perfect angel to a demon that can't even redeem himself. He doesn't even have the capacity to repent. Do you hear what I said? He doesn't even have the capacity to repent. That's what Satan developed himself into. Even when God threw him out had Michael and his angel threw him out of heaven. He didn't strip him of his power. Mm-hmm. He threw him into the earth. But he warned us, didn't he? Mm-hmm. He said, Beware because Satan is wroth. That means that he is mad. He's wroth. Right. Mm-hmm. Satan is still wroth. Mm-hmm. He's your worst enemy. Yeah. Did y'all get that? Satan is your worst enemy. Lucifer rebelled and and started that descent. It started in the spirit realm, so I don't know how far back that was. It started in the spirit realm. That could have been, it was in fact before even the world was created. That rascal started rebelling against God. I read far enough to find out what was in his heart. Now let me show you what was in Satan's heart. Don't let this happen to you. Lucifer said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high God. Listen to that language in Satan's mind. Do you think God the creator going to let Satan, you or me talk that kind of language? That was pride. God hates a proud heart. That's what got Satan into trouble. Did you understand what I'm saying? Did you get it? I don't know how long it took for that rascal to get himself into that trouble, but he's in trouble. Still is. You understand what I'm saying? This is the thing that got Lucifer in trouble with God. 
And if you try that, you get in trouble also. You understand? Watch this. That same enmity or conflict that was brewing in the mind of Satan escalated in the heavens so that Michael and his angels got into war with Satan and his angel and Satan and the angels that agreed with him got thrown out of heaven into the earth and Jesus says, I saw him like a flash of light. Amen. I'm down to five minutes. I knew I couldn't do it. Thank you, sir. So I saw him like a flash of light and threw him into the earth. But he told everybody in the earth, watch out. Because Satan is wrath. He's mad. He's your enemy. And he's been destroying people ever since. Did you hear what I'm saying? Uh, but, but, but thank God. Thank God. You don't have to bother Satan. You don't have to bother that rascal. You got him. But you got to know that you have got him. Because the Lamb of God has put you in the driver's seat to crush his head, so start doing it. Amen. Well, I thought, well, he'd give me five minutes here, but you know, I got at least another half an hour to go. But <laughs> let, me, let me bring it down. I'm going to just stop with two minutes. Mothers, as I said earlier, you can do a tremendous job in stopping the spirit of Satan in this town with homicides if you start teaching that kid to stay in school Amen. male or female tell him to stay in school Amen. tell him that that's his job to stay in school you understand what I'm saying because if he stays in school he will find a way to go to college or trade school rather than going to the streets to try to push drugs Amen. because if he pushed drugs that's short lived I said any kid that's pushing drugs at 11 by the time he's 17 he's in jail and by the time he's 21, he's probably dead. Yes, sir. Yes. But I give the example of what happened to me. Well, you see, at 13, I was in high school, 17 in college, and 21, I was in graduate school. Mm-hmm. That's the way you ought to go. Mm-hmm. Tell him that's the way to go, whether he can see it or not. Mm-hmm. And if he does it that way, we got saved. <laughs>